It's four. There she is. Hi, everybody. Charles Hoskinson here, live from warm, sunny Colorado. Or not so live. I guess we're recording, Sam. Uh, but it's always warm and sunny in Colorado, except for the times it's not. Uh, so I very rarely do interviews. And uh, today I'm joined by Sam from Everopedia. And uh, there's some context behind this one. So uh, for the last five years, uh, Cardano has been a project. We've been around. And for the last three years, I'd say that we're pretty notable and noteworthy because at one time we as a project were worth more than Tesla and SpaceX. Uh, and at one time, uh, you know, uh, we had a um, market cap, I think, over $30 billion. Uh, but setting price aside, uh, we also have published 90 papers, about half of which have gone through peer review written more than a million lines of code and have a community of hundreds of thousands of members throughout the entire world. Uh, we've been mentioned by the European Union. Uh, we've been mentioned by heads of state, such as the Prime Minister of Georgia, many government bodies. Uh, we have many university partnerships from University of Athens to University of Edinburgh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, and most recently, University of Wyoming, which is the first U.S. institution to accept ADA uh, for a payment. Uh, we've also been mentioned by the United States House of, House of Representatives and hundreds of journalists and probably thousands of podcasts. Well, despite all these things, uh, it was of the opinion until just last month that Cardano was not a notable project. And therefore, we don't deserve a Wikipedia page to be joined by the uh, other pages such as Titcoin, a deprecated project from 2015, or my video game, Legends of Valor, uh, which came out in 1992, and I think I'm the last person alive currently playing the video game. In fact, the people who made the game are not even alive anymore. Uh, but they deserve, in some cases, very extensive uh, Wikipedia pages, but uh, we obviously did not. So our community, for a long time, went to Twitter and to other places and complained about it, and it reached ahead uh, last month. And uh, during that time, Sam, you kind of reached out to us over uh, for Twitter, and said, "Hey, you should come on over to the uh, to the to the promised land." And I said, "Okay, well, we we should have a conversation about that." So I figured uh, I very rarely do interviews. The last time I did it was for Singularity Net uh, with Ben Goritzel, which is an uh, artificial general intelligence project. And so I figured I'd uh, do an interview with you guys and try to figure out what your platform is all about and uh, try to get a better understanding of um, what problems you're trying to solve and how the platform has evolved since launch. So um, why don't we start with you introducing yourself and how the heck did you get into decentralized Wikipedia as a, uh, as a product? Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Charles. It's, uh, it's great to talk to you again. Uh, we were uh, on the same panel ways off uh, in, in Hong Kong and uh, you know I miss the, the pre-COVID days, but hopefully things will get back to normal. But uh, yeah, so I personally, uh, co-founder, president of Everpedia, got into crypto around 2013, uh, originally script mining uh, all the uh, original coins and, and all that stuff. Um, we, we started building Everpedia in 2015-ish. Uh, mm -hmm. without crypto technology, right? Because that was back when Ethereum just like came out with like all of these, uh, you know, you, you know better better than most people uh, with, with all of the vision, but the tech wasn't exactly there. And, and, and mm -hmm. in the 17, 18 uh, era is when we decided to uh, look into making Everpedia a decentralized knowledge protocol. Um, we picked EOS uh, to build on in, in that landscape. Um, Everpedia has obviously huge uh, ambitions in terms of being a knowledge protocol. One of the things mm -hmm. actually uh, I'll, you know, I'll say out in, in, in the open is that um, knowledge should be neutral, right? True, true, actual, uh, you know, and then we'll, we can get to the t topic of neutrality, but uh, and in, in that space, it should be uh, available on any medium, right? And so we're, we're always mm -hmm. very interested in looking at other blockchain implementations of how Everpedia works. And so the idea with Everpedia is basically what if you could actually rebuild the, the idea of a repository of knowledge in, in basically every kind of uh, decentralized way where the, the actual content, right, the, the blob content, the media text uh, is it stored, you know, through IPFS or peer-to-peer -peer channels. The consensus of that is um, currently it's uh, incentivized uh, with staking of the Everpedia IQ token. Well, yeah, yeah, let's get to that. But um, let's start with what were the deficits of Wikipedia? What didn't you like about that platform? Because obviously, if you're trying to do something, you always ask, well, what is the incumbency 
doing that's good and what's the incumbency doing yeah. that's bad. So what did you yeah. like about Wikipedia? What were the problems you were trying to solve back in 2015? Exactly the, the same uh, experience that, uh, that uh, you guys had, except obviously um, we just noticed that we weren't you know, running a, a multi-billion dollar world changing project. It was the notability standard and the structure of it, right? Because before mm -hmm. we even came onto the blockchain, right? The, the idea was uh, we had the, this, this view that um, what Wikipedia did to Britannica is uh, wide open to be done to Wikipedia because what Wikipedia did is they digitized the encyclopedia with the definition of encyclopedic as, as the classical definition, right? So for example, uh, whatever, for example, that might or, or needs to be on Britannica or, or something like that mm -hmm. now is a community online effort. And, and that's fantastic, right? That's paradigm shifting, right? For, for the internet age 2001, um, when, when uh, Larry Sanger and Jimmy Wales, you know, created uh, Wikipedia around 2000 ish 2001. Um, and I mean, it was Newpedia before I, and, and the, the history is actually quite interesting, right? So how, mm -hmm. how it evolved. Um, and the thing is, I, we didn't feel like the definition of encyclopedia was even, you know, even thought about, uh, with, with Wikipedia. And I think that definition has changed because of, of the digital age. And, and that was one of the main things, uh, we always had a, had a problem with. I'll tell you this, that, that. Uh, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of Wikipedia, right? Like I think a lot of people think like they are a lot of what's right with the internet. Obviously, there's a lot of things wrong that could could be improved on, but that they a lot of people point to Wikipedia as a lot of things that they get right that no other place does, right? So there's no tracking, there's no uh, direct advertisement and and things like that. Um, and and credit to them. I'm a huge fan of all of that stuff. And so we, you know, we, we need to recognize that. And I, I do recognize that and stuff like that. But our original thesis with Everpedia was, why is it that the definition of, of encyclopedic is not, is not uh, rethought, right? It's, it's not like digital space is an issue, right? And it's, it's not like, um, you know, it's, it's not like putting something in in this you know compendium of knowledge or something would water down anything else if if like uh and, and there's a dynamic nature to it so when you have an encyclopedia no matter how many people read it or interact with it it's the same but when you have digital content that is community curated the more fans you get the more knowledge you start accumulating exactly and it, it, this virtuous cycle right and then also the other thing is let's say something is is on there that that it is not is not notable for whatever whoever gets to define notable right which is also obviously a huge problem right but but let's just say the definition aside is fine uh why does it matter if something doesn't meet that criteria and and it's you know inside of of the the encyclopedia and like no one read you know few people get there like it, it literally is a problem that doesn't is, is not a problem right like like if, if if no one's interested, they won't read it and it's not going to, you know, but, but if someone is, uh, then they will. And actually that's what grew, uh, Everpedia in 2015, 16 and 17, before we moved it into a decentralized protocol. That's what grew, uh, the entire, uh, platform to millions of page views a month. What we actually, um, what we actually got page views for is we you could see you know on on like our, our google analytics and, and stuff people looking for the wikipedia article of something whether it was like uh an up-and-coming reporter influencer <laughs> entrepreneur uh an up-and-coming like app or startup that you know wasn't as big as uber to have like a wikipedia page or something right um they were like looking you could see the the uh google search terms right you could see like so and so like uh, wiki wikipedia like info like you could literally see so many people searching for these things and so everpedia came up right because uh we were a a, a well-designed um nice welcoming uh inclusive uh not you know deletionist ideal of of knowledge and so we uh we had a lot of page views for for things that you know people really wanted to um 
actually read we we uh branded it kind of like think of like you know why crunchbase exists right because people want to know what who invested in in what startups and stuff uh if wikipedia was super liberal you would just go to the there most likely be a wikipedia page for for those startups but because it's so difficult and uh, Wikipedia is not really welcoming and embracing of, of like the startup ecosystem. Everyone, you know, Crunchbase is a huge thing and I like Crunchbase too, but, but the fact is it would have just been absorbed by the, the compendium of knowledge that is Wikipedia if they were more inclusive, right? And so you'd have- well, Let's these- talk about definitions because you mentioned that the definition of encyclopedia needs to be evolved and grown from the Britannica paper-based definition that Wikipedia tried to adhere to. So wh- what would you say is a proper definition of an encyclopedia? If you had to write it down in a paragraph or two, what would you, what would you say about it? Oh, gee, that's a, that's a pretty hard one. But my personal definition encompasses uh, neutrality um, mm-hmm. of topics. And obviously, you know, Wikipedia has their own definition. But my personal definition is... Um, something that actually tells you all the positions cited, right? Cited reputably about a particular topic. And that actually encompasses the definition of neutrality, right? Because one thing that's really, really, really important that admittedly Wikipedia, aside from these very clear violations, most of the time, and I know this is probably controversial these days with everything being partisan, but in its history, most of the time, Wikipedia has gotten right, uh, but but not really everything, especially recently. And so part of the thing is neutrality is really important. It needs to really, really uh, encompass the definition of, of an encyclopedia. And what neutrality to me, what, what it means is that uh, you what you're reading doesn't actually take a position. It meta describes all of the you know spectrum of positions right and so that that's what's really really important so when you for example read a uh encyclopedic article on prop 22 right which is the california proposition uh the uber lyft thing should they be employees or should they be contractors you should read it instead of you know feeling like you know who edited it, like if they're on, on a labor union or if they're like an Uber or, or Lyft, like, uh, you know, manager or, or you know, uh, executive, you should actually be able to read it and hear both positions uh, from that article. And so that's what's really important. That's my definition of, of an encyclopedia. You hear both sides. And for example, if, you know, Dara Hosrushai, the CEO of Uber, for example, was reading the uh, the wiki for Prop 22, like a really well-written encyclopedic article. He would probably read and be like, okay, yeah, like that. that is part of that That uh, Uber's view is, is really in there. And he would, right. uh, you know, contend that it's, it's, it's well-written. And then also on the opposite end, if like the leader of like the labor unions for, for like, you know, uh, drivers and, and whatever was reading the same article, they would be like, okay, okay, like, uh, you know, the no position really, really well uh, written or like maybe, you know, it's just so well inclusive of positions. That's my definition of an encyclopedia. I think it really has to, uh, really the central core of it is this idea of describing positions rather than just talking about uh, a particular topic from a point of view. Okay. So that, that tends to work well when you're talking about a, like say a religion or a political event. Uh, but what about when you're actually deriving knowledge from some sort of mechanistic version of truth, like scientific knowledge? Uh, so there's certainly a, for example, a spectrum of opinions on global warming, but, uh, you can take a view of, well, the opinions that matter are those that are scientifically derived or you can take an opinion, well, perhaps we need more nuance there. So how do you handle those controversial things where there's a clash between uh, a systematic way of thinking that derives at a, a truth that's concluded uh, but versus an opinion, for example, Prop 22? Yeah, right. And, and that's so, so that obviously uh, becomes pretty difficult once you, once you have a definition, then it's like, okay, you said include all uh, reasonable positions. Okay, so now what's a reasonable position? And then how much airtime in this article do these reasonable positions get? What about scientists versus like tinfoilers, right? Uh, on, on some of these uh, uh, positions. That's a totally uh, valid question. It's pretty difficult to 
to answer. And I think I think that's one of the weak points of uh, Wikipedia, right? And I think that's where they're actually staying a little archaic because they've just embraced uh, this classical idea of like anything that's a, a classical source of, of stuff. Uh, if it's if it's like scientific, it needs to be covered by like these these list of sources. Otherwise, it's not going to be. Used Actually, to was one of our issues with Wikipedia. We were cited by Springer Vale, which is one of the largest academic publishers yeah. in the world, and we, we had peer reviewed conferences that we were cited at, and the editors actually said those were not credible citations. Yeah, I mean that, that doesn't that that doesn't make coherent sense. Uh, even even before like you know 20 years ago when they were found but even less so now because if you think about it the internet is so well integrated that like knowledge both synthesis uh cite citing knowledge as well as uh you know creating and consolidating it all happen uh on the internet through different means, right, from public publishing scientific papers, uh, news, or, or like perspective, opinions. And, and I think Wikipedia has just like absolved themselves of trying to even come up with a new, uh, you know, relevant opinion and, and being like, the, the, the same list that we have from 2000, uh, these are these are it, right? And, and they right. probably don't even consider uh, a lot of things that, that are possible today that, that, you know, is part of their founding ethos. And th that is exactly well, what people talk about when they're like, the old get disrupted and, and, and new, uh, new things come out. And what, one of the interesting, really, really funny things, actually, um, I, I, I want you to look at it if you haven't seen it, but there was, uh, there was this author, I, I forget their name, but I, I have this, I have this uh, New York Post, I, I think, or New York Times article bookmarked. I'll send it to you. But uh, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but this author had their Wikipedia page incorrectly edited by whoever edits Wikipedia, right? Because it's 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 uh, anyone can edit it, and they were the author. Like they they prove it. Like they he has a website. He's a famous author, right? Like a, a award winning author and stuff. And then he's like, hey, just wanted to tell you, like. Um, I, it says my inspiration for writing this book, which is a super famous book is, is not what's written on my Wikipedia page. It was, it was, uh, the inspiration was this other thing. And then the guys told him, well, we can't change it. If, if the, the citation from, uh, the New York times, someone else writing about you, uh, says that, that like, it, it was this, we're not going to change it. And he's like, right. but I, author it's lit it's my i am the author and i'm saying i was not inspired by this how can right. you not change it and then and then what happened was they the new york post published his like post saying this is ridiculous i am the author and like i uh this is incorrect so that wikipedia could cite that thing and then like uh, change it and say, okay, this was an error. Like you know, his his real uh, according to him. Now that we can cite it on on the New York uh, Post or New York Times or whatever, and that's ridiculous, right? This is like the exact example. Like this is such a well, like clear and ridiculous example of like Wikipedia just being very archaic. With I I ran into a somewhat similar issue. Uh, so I have a Wikipedia page about me, and one of my fans yeah. is trying to get my commercial picture that's on the IOHK website as the official picture there. So they contacted me and said, hey, can you send an email to the Wikimedia Foundation to re you know, release the copyright so that it's under a Creative Commons license so they can post it? I said, sure. So it gives me a template to send to them. I email them and then they email back, well, how do we know you actually own the IP? And I said, well, I paid to have the picture taken. Well, we have no guarantee that you own the IP. Get the person who took the picture to uh to send us something i said oh fuck this so i right there and then take a picture with my cell phone uh and i send it to him i said here you go this is my new creative commons and they email back saying this is not the original picture please send us the original picture and i was like guys i just took this on my cell phone i'll probably send screenshots and tweet them out but i i can understand you're you're just in, in, in sometimes kafka-esque uh, adherence to orthodoxy that, that these guys have. But let's follow that thread. So neutrality is a big part of your definition. 
sorry, sorry. Don't mean to. I had the exact same. I, I don't know if this is like a crypto founder experience or, or or what, but like I also have a Wikipedia page, and then I had the same exact issue. Except I think I, I think I kind of outsmarted my way. Uh, it was a, it was a really long time ago, but um, but the, they said the exact same thing. They're like, hey, uh, you know, this page is, you know, this, this thing is a uh, this picture is clearly uh, taken really well or whatever, who's the person uh, that, that took it. And I'm like, here's the, um, I have the copyright for it, right? And then the exact same answer. How do you know that, uh, that, that it's, it's you that, that took this? I'm like, okay, I, I took it with a, with a tripod myself. Are you happy? And then they never replied and kept the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cra it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But you know, it's it, it is what it, it is what it is when you're worried about liability. So let's talk about neutrality. You know, this is key to your definition of a, a modern encyclopedia. So uh, part of that definition, if I understand it correctly, is this idea of completeness. So you would like that all viewpoints have been fairly represented. But then there's this issue of fairness of representation. So for example, let's look at abortion. Um, the people who who are pro-life would claim, hey, this is murder, and we'd like that to be in the article. The people who are pro-choice would probably have a difference of opinion. So how do you square that circle of who gets to decide, first, if it's complete or not, for the sake of neutrality, and then second, uh, who gets to decide if the representations made by each side are fair and accurate? You know, what, what, what does that mean in a system like this? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult because uh, then you, you kind of come to the idea of, okay, sure, you can show both viewpoints in the article or something, but you can never escape true fairness because then, like, what do you call it in the first sentence? Like, is it, you call it abortion is, like, the murder of, like, you know, an, an, an unborn, you know, child or fetus or, again, right? Like, what, what are you going to say, right? So... I um, it's at, at some point, uh, just like a lot of, uh, human, you know, philosophical concepts, it becomes just a intuitive grapple. Um, but what's, what's really, uh, interesting and, and stuff that we're thinking about at Everpedia is like, is it better to design the system where these categories of, of pages and views are disjoint in there's there's multiple encyclopedias, but using the same protocol. This is actually something uh, Larry uh, Sanger suggested, and, and something that he's working on in, in his view of, of knowledge called like the encyclosphere, or or like a greater uh, protocol, a, a greater wiki, so, so to speak, right? Where it's like instead of trying to pack everything into one unified article, you create a, a protocol, right? Like an interchangeable protocol, and so you know, uh, pro-life people have their own, uh, and it's kind of what's kind of happened with like conservopedia, Wikipedia and, and things like that, but, but without a clear uh, overarching protocol for this, right? That, that actually uh, defines some, some communicative uh, rules. But with Everpedia, we so far have had a, a, a really welcoming community overall that's allowed um, both, uh, you know, both sides and and without without too many issues uh, and and so well, one of the cool things is people say like if you're pissing off both sides you're doing something right because you're you're getting both things right but at Everpedia actually what's really cool is both sides like us which is extremely difficult like we we do get uh, a lot of uh, retweets fans and 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 people on on the conservative spectrum saying. This sounds fair in in this in this environment. Like I appreciate that, and then obviously uh, progressive and, and liberal sides to uh, a lot of our, our content. They're like, uh, you know, this is this is reputable. The sources make sense and, and stuff like. So as hard as that does sound, and as difficult in, in today's environment, we actually get that quite often, which I'm pretty proud of. Right. Well, Larry's actually coming to do a, a seminar for us. At uh, every week, we do a, a technical seminar. Uh, for our engineers. And uh, on the 9th, he's going to be presenting the encyclosphere idea. And we'll have a great chance to kind of dig into that and the bullet points and checks and balances there and so forth. Um, and so, that, yeah. so that's fun. And he sent me a book, of course. He's, I guess, a trained philosopher. So it's going to be fun to uh, to see what he has to say. I mean, um, I, I also studied philosophy. Obviously, I don't have a PhD, but at UCLA, I was a neuroscience and philosophy double major. But uh, so oh. me and Larry have 
gone so much back and forth. He's, he's shaped a lot of my beliefs on, on neutrality. So. Yeah, and it's clear that we don't have it because people are getting deplatformed, but it's not yeah. innately clear what to do about it. You know, and there's always this tendency to build a meta system above the existing system to solve it. We even do this in mathematics. Uh, for example, we had a lot of problems with set theory. We started seeing paradoxes occur, like Russell's paradox, for example. We said, oh, we'll just create some sort of structure above sets, like categories or something. And that'll, that'll just solve everything. <laughs> you know? so, so sometimes you build a bigger system to resolve the problems of the smaller system. And then, of course, inductively, the bigger system will still have some form of problem with it that you have to then build an even larger system. But anyway, setting all that aside, so we have this baseline definition, this, uh, this concept of neutrality. But one thing that hasn't been discussed is knowledge categorization. There seems to be an implicit difference from knowledge that's discoverable from knowledge that's not. And what I mean by that is, let's say uh, the world has amnesia and every copy of the Bible is destroyed. There is no reliable way that we could just somehow through inspiration reproduce Exodus or Genesis or these things. Whereas if we just have that amnesia and forget everything we knew about gravity, through a series of experiments and interactions with the physical world, over time we would rediscover many of the truths that we'd learn about gravity. We've seen this with a lot of knowledge throughout human history. You know, we have the, the ancient world and then the dark ages happened and then the Renaissance occurs and we kind of rediscover a lot of the things that the Romans knew about or the Greeks knew about. Uh, for example, the Minoans even had um, geothermal heating for their uh, and indoor plumbing in 1500 BC took it to like the 16th, 17th century before these things in AD uh, became prevalent again. So how do you categorize knowledge? Uh, you know, first in general, and what you've chosen to do with Everpedia, do you have kind of a catechism of how you separate things into different buckets and say, well, this is this type of knowledge and this is this type of knowledge. And based upon that category, you have different ways of curating it or incentivizing the curation of it? Yeah, that's a, that's a really deep question, especially because it kind of, grapples at the idea of uh, what we can even know, right? Um, and what we can discover through empirical science and, and, and what we uh, need to preserve. And then, then you get into the question of, okay, well, who gets to you know, preserve it and, and, and say what it is? Um, but w one of the things that, at, at Everpedia is, and this is pretty controversial, I'll, I'll be the first to, to say this, is that since this is a crypto protocol, there's this there's an IQ token. You know, cross chain implementations could even have different kinds of tokens. You can you can create minted tokens on on other stuff. You can bring uh, market dynamics to an incentive game theory incentivization to categorizing and upkeeping different types of of knowledge. And again, that is a very controversial idea, right? So so bringing monetary value and and value into any of this stuff immediately gives an intuitive like knee-jerk reflex of oh my god there's money in here now that's uh it's like a you know like right. a market of, of like uh, misinformation and, and stuff like that um we actually kind of this is everpedia is a big grand experiment right like like a lot of these things like bitcoin and, and and stuff like that um and so we we try to use game theory and and like uh seeing how different types of pages and content from like the scientific ones to the historical ones to actually even to even like recent right like like trending or or news related things that become prominent uh right how they're up kept and, and how much you know iq is staked on them for example or or if there's uh to where influx of, of new editors are going you know just there's there's a lot of types of knowledge both philosophically categorized like you're saying empirical uh historic or in, in, in the internet age, uh, breaking, right? Just like when people are trying to discover, you know, for the first time empirically, like what is true or not, like, you know, all of these uh, events, like the, the protests in, in the in the US and, and stuff like that, um, like what's actually happening, right? Like, like is, is, uh, is everything burning or is, is, is there uh, unrest here or is it peaceful and all, all that stuff, right? Um, so we actually are experimenting with market dynamics as, as you know and as some people will will raise an eyebrow there but we that that's what uh part of everpedia's brand experiment is yeah. and we're seeing different kinds of uh stuff in, in that and so far it's been pretty good it's been pretty successful yeah. i mean we pay scientists to do research and you know we pay authors to write books and these things so it's not necessarily the world's worst thing to create a marketplace but when you create a market 
create winners and losers. So now that you've been running the experiment for a little bit, what have you noticed your marketplace values? And there's a lot of activity and incentives. And what have you noticed is uh, not so valued and actually is losing in the marketplace? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, actually, we've been surprised that things that, uh, you know, that, that you would think, um, you know, are should be potentially not as valued so much because it's not as clickbaity like basic science or, or historical things are actually valued. A, a lot of our uh, most edited things are uh, upkeeping of our uh, encyclopedic and scientific content. So like we actually started, when we started Everpedia, right, we, uh, we forked Wikipedia, right, because Creative Commons, all of Everpedia's content is also Creative Commons. It's all free knowledge, open, uh, decentralized. And so a lot of the things that people really like to do is actually upkeep uh, the original uh, Wikipedia content, but in a better, you know, more diverse light and and things like that. And you would think intuitively, like, okay, well, maybe if there's IQ tokens involved and, and things like that, the more interesting stuff is uh, is like breaking news. Like people want to get page views or or eyes on on a lot of this stuff, and that's not actually necessarily true. I think um, I think there's an intellectual. Uh, curiosity that once there is a market, you can earn IQ tokens or cryptocurrency or something of value uh, for genuinely pursuing your your intellectual interest, um, as long as other people in the system, you know, vote that this is this is actually adding value. You you can get rewarded, and it's actually very very cool. Like one of the things we realized is um, our science pages and stuff uh, mm -hmm. are edited as much as um, you know, the influencers and up and coming people and, and cryptocurrencies and, and stuff like that. Now, obviously, like, you know, just in terms of numbers, uh, the more actual page views coming from search engines and stuff at this current time is, you know, influencers and, and new cryptocurrencies and, and new entrepreneurs, because most people currently still go to Wikipedia to learn about, uh, you know, quantum mechanics rather than Everpedia. But in the coming months and a few years and stuff, I think a lot of that will tip a little bit. Right. Okay. So there's a lot of questions we go for here. You know, there's definitely market related questions and then there's questions involving the transitivity of knowledge curation. So let's start with the market <laughs> side, cause that that's probably more familiar to most of our listeners. Um, you have this token and it's called an IQ token. Yeah. And uh, is this a participation token in that to edit an article, you must have it? Or is it uh, like a different model like Steam, where you, you can create something, but if it gets well curated, you earn it? I mean, how, how, do, they, how do the economics of this? It's like work? a modified, it's, it's like a modified, updated, um, obviously, in our uh, opinion, improved version of Steam. And so when you, uh, for example, create an article, you have to stake some IQ, and then people that have IQ staked can can vote on whether to change, like revert the state of, of your article, which is literally just the meaning of that is reverting your edit, right? Or, or approving. So the state. I can create an article, I have to be vested in the system. Um, a minimum amount. So actually, that's technically yes, in terms of programmatic, but actually what we do uh, so you can right now go to Everpedia. You can sign in with uh, a Twitter, Facebook, email. And it sh it's what we wanted to do actually is in order to start, we wanted to get rid of that huge barrier to, okay, I have to go somehow get some IQ token. So I have to first go to Coinbase because I don't have cryptocurrency, right? right? And then buy Bitcoin and then like move it to some exchange for I IQ or something like that. What we actually do is, we give you the minimum amount, right? Some constant C, right? In the protocol of whatever, right? And so you stake that. And the idea is um, if you do a good job, right? If you do something that adds value by definition of the people who have stake and, and are you know, also doing stuff, then you get a small amount of the inflation of that uh, reward period. And then you can actually just, it, uh, the front end programmatically continues to stake the new IQ you've earned to be able to do do something else again, right? To edit again and, and, and stuff like that. And so actually what it becomes is if you're doing a good job, again, as defined by people who have stake, right? That, again, the definitions are pretty important. Um, it's totally free. In fact, not only is it free, but it, it earns you value, right? Uh, 
So as, as defined by the value you're creating. But if, if you're attacking the system as defined by like you're taking up resources, you're just putting stuff that other people think that, uh, you know, is, is, uh, is, is like a waste of the resources of the system, then you're not earning the value. You're just basically have to continue to get IQ to uh, make these edits, which then can be overturned, but then, you know, you can keep, you know, proposing them or changing them. And stuff. Okay, so is the relationship for Everpedia to the Everpedia protocol similar to the relationship between Steam and to Steam? And that there's kind of like a, the website there's, actually on an off-ramp? Yeah, there, there's some similarities. Uh, obviously, Steam, you know, the idea is anyone can post uh, anything. Um, and in Everpedia, you can as well. You can make articles, but the, but the idea is that they should be cited. Um, they should be, uh, the community should have one you know, round of, of like vetting the, the edit state and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's similar to Steam and that that's, touches back to what I was uh, talking about before is like one of the things, you know, we've thought about is, um, again, then that just kind of creates the same definitions of, okay, well, if the IQ token holders end up becoming as calcified in ideology as, as Wikipedia, right, then you kind of eventually end up with the same uh, systemic issues, except now it's, uh, now there's money involved, right? And then uh, um, one of the things we're thinking of is, well, is there some way we can create different Everpedia universes, but all governed by the same protocol? Uh, kind of like what I was saying before, where uh, there is like Conservapedia and Wikipedia, but they don't even talk to each other and there's no overarching interoperability between them. There's no unit of account or anything. But one of the things we're thinking of is what if you could, for example, uh, color your IQ tokens, like conservative IQ, uh, liberal, but you know, other stuff, right? Maybe like math, math IQ, right? And so you can, um, like, a, like a stack exchange type of approach. Exactly. Right. But then it's still the same protocol. Exactly. That's a better, uh, way. And so, so for example, like a decentralized stack exchange kind of encyclopedia, right? And so that's one thing we're looking at, uh, right now. Okay. So there's this plutocratic curation that exists inside the system. So I guess the hypothesis is that the desire for the token to survive and thrive will override the personal preferences and biases of the whales in the system uh, for steering the protocol in a particular direction. Is that a fair way of stating it? That, that's a fair way of saying, yeah, as long as the, those things are, are, are balanced, right? Like, but if one thing, and so the idea is like, you know, as the importance of Everpedia as a brand and, and where people go, uh, goes up, if the token price doesn't proportionally go up, then you have then then someone might want to sacrifice some value because the uh, of the token to influence the the knowledge there, right? Because it's a good deal, right? As, but as long as they're both growing, the idea is you're right. What what you're saying is hopefully going to hold true. It's kind of like the point where people talk about uh, well, if the Bitcoin block uh, you, you know rewards go to near zero, unless the transaction fees go up, right? um like proportionally right then the hash rate either has to go down and then that lowers the security right the security has to kind of uh match the bitcoin dollar price in some way right and so yeah that that assumption is uh similar in, in in everpedia's uh protocol which is not a given right it's not a given for the bitcoin security structure of the the fees and block rewards and it's not yeah, a we've seen deficits on many cases but uh they're usually short-term and self-correcting. So there's a KPI question then of, well, how do you know the system is actually doing what it's intended to doing? You know, what metrics do you guys follow to indicate that you're converging to neutrality and plutocratic curation is actually resulting in uh, a lack of censorship as opposed to what we see on Wikipedia, which is commercial censorship? Yeah, so, so that's a two-part answer, right? One is... Um, the KPIs. One of the things is that obviously we have our own opinions, but uh, we really uh, so far have had very positive, um, you know, uh, responses and and anything that uh, people like. Like I said, both sides are actually happy, but both sides is in like the spectrum is is quite happy. So that, from just an intuitive perspective, is quite good. The more the more interesting part that I think is important is. That's where the blockchain and, and, and decentralization aspect comes in, is that I think that if we build the system correctly, it should be impossible uh, for us, you know, as a group or as, as a website, right, mm -hmm. to co-opt the protocol itself, similar to how uh, Bitcoin is doing really well. You can't, you know, Coinbase 
can't cut off access to Bitcoin, right? Because it's just it's one one front end interface uh, for it, one wallet, one service provider. And so the idea is the way we've built Everpedia, right, where the content is is stored um, on IPFS, uh, the hashes are updated, you know, the stakes and voting is all all the backend logic, so to speak, mm -hmm. is done on chain. The most recent uh, hash history for each article is stored inside you know, smart contracts. And so you can actually see all of the history of all of the state changes. Um, and in that respect, I think we've designed the system uh, similar to Bitcoin, right? So if if I, you know, get possessed to become evil and, and want to spread uh, misinformation or something like that, uh, which hopefully is never going to happen. Um, but if, if that happens, you don't even have to trust me, right? Anyone... Yeah. Build. But you're talking about knowledge preservation, and uh, it's my mine is more of a question of of quality, because we we've taken the position with this definition that not all knowledge is created equally. There's a difference between highly biased junk stuff and highly sourced neutral stuff that's universally valuable to the you know almost a utilitarian sense to as many people as possible. So the question is, what KPIs would indicate where on the spectrum you fall? And month by month, do you guys see progress towards that right side of, of neutral, balanced information? Like, how do you guys track certain things? For example, yeah. just an analogy, we created Ouroboros for Cardano, and it's a consensus protocol. And it's it's one thing for me to say, oh, it's super decentralized and secure and so forth. It's another thing entirely to say, okay, we have metrics of participation. So we yeah. have the number of registered stake pool operators, and we can look at the trend. Are more unique people participating or less or the same? And are these rewards enough to actually create sustainable businesses or are businesses going out of business all the time? And it's, you know, declining. So we track that as a key KPI of whether the protocol is working or not. Do you have, a, you know, analogously equivalent uh, KPIs for are you yeah. converging to more neutral articles and both volume and quality? Yeah. So so one of the most clear ones uh, that we keep track of is, as you know, we we originally forked Wikipedia. So we have all 5 million English Wikipedia articles. And then one of our KPIs, we actually have uh, over one and a half, give or take, uh, unique uh, Everpedia articles that have uh, that are only on Everpedia right now. And, and a subset of those, um, and I can get you know the community if, if they're interested in stuff and Cardano, the exact number, but subset of those uh, that were deleted from Wikipedia uh, Cardano's was was one of them. Thankfully, you clearly and well deserved sorted that out. But like for example, a subset of that was literally uh, stuff that Wikipedia purged for for lack of a of a better term. And then a lot of the other ones was uh, new articles and, and knowledge on Wikipedia that wasn't even made on on Wikipedia, right? Just because of the platform uh, community and 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 uh, um, guidelines and structure of of how right. we've. That, um, that we've actually been able to foster, right? And so those are like hard numbers. Um, now, how to analyze the content in those, it becomes extremely difficult, right? Because then you don't have a Wikipedia comparison at least, right? Then, then you're literally uh, just, just it's just Everpedia, right? And so it becomes really interesting. Um, for our Wikipedia forks, a lot of them are uh, upkept, slightly different, in my opinion, better, uh, more um, visual, uh, upkept um, by uh, a diverse group of, of, of editors, um, mm -hmm. also upkept by, by Wikipedians. There's a lot of Wikipedians that actually cross edit. And like I said, we, we like uh, a, a lot of these talented and very smart uh, editors. So like, I think, um, I think it's really cool that there's a lot of crossover. So we, ha we actually have some good KPIs, over a million uh, and a half-ish of, uh, of you know, just knowledge on Everpedia and some of those, unfortunately, removed from Wikipedia, which I obviously really uh, disapprove of personally. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. It took Wikipedia almost 20 years to get to a scale of 4 million articles. And you guys, uh, you guys have achieved about 20% of that, if not more, in just a few years. So that's a great growth curve. Uh, but that's a, quali a quantitative metric. What about qualitative? Do you have a way of, when you actually go on a case by case, article by article basis, like, for example, one of the articles we have umbrage with on Wikipedia and we're trying to get changed is the proof of stake article. It's it actually hurts Dan Larimer as much as it hurts me, because the only representation of proof of stake is like NXT and these things back from 2012 and 2013. Yeah, right, and we right. have Grand and EOS and Cardano and Polkadot and all these other things. And there's like probably 50 
proof of stake scientific papers that have been written. And anytime we try to do anything to improve the article, uh, it's, re it's removed and they say IOHK spam and other people suffer the same fate. So I would argue that while that article exists, it's part of that set of existent, uh, existing articles, the quality of the article is quite low. So do you have a way of, you know, if I was to arbitrarily pick at random an article out of the set of the Everpedia articles, looking at that and then being able to say, yes, this meets the direction we're going in, this, this neutrality and high quality information, uh, and you know, we can measure it, maybe even give it a scoring between zero and 100. It's like 100 is perfect, zero is like junk. You know, can you actually, are you at a stage where you have those capabilities? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, totally agree about, I, I don't know what it is about the, these like crypto articles being literally like archaic from the crypto middle ages, right? Like now there's Avalanche, Cardano. Uh, you, these are like, like Amin Gunsir is like a, like a Cornell professor, right? And like, it just, none of these like breaking technologies are even, you know, proportionally discussed, which is absolutely crazy. So totally agree, also frustrating. Um, so that's a great question and something we we were working on directly when, when Larry was, uh, at Everpedia and then Larry's actually working more directly full time on that exact idea of, of, of rating, uh, knowledge. One of the cool things is we can also have, uh, value marketplace KPIs built into it. But as of right now, the only things we track are how much quicker our stuff gets updated than Wikipedia or sometimes slower, most of the times quicker, um, and, and the length as well as the diversity of citations. But no, we don't, we don't have like a, like a rating system um, as of now. In fact, I would love to uh, either collaborate with, uh, you know, really scientific community like Cardano's or, or anyone that wants to, you know, join in our, our like kind of mission of, of knowledge and, and stuff like that to develop something like that. Like I said, we were working on it with Larry uh, when he was at Everpedia, but um, there's no rating system as of now, but there's a wealth of uh, ways to model this, this kind of stuff because it's all on chain. It's all open, uh, open source. Um, now there's market, there's value you can also model as well, right? Like how much stake was put right. on or, or that, and, and it's it's really exciting, but but no, we don't. But I would love to, uh, you know, yeah. anyone. And then the problem is that it, it, there's a blurred ep uh, epistemology line between uh, of subjectivity and objectivity here yeah. of you know the value yeah. of this knowledge that's very contextual to a user. Um, so the minute you start rating it, you run into the same issues that like Politifact and Facebook, for example, when they say, "Hey, this is not true versus true." That's, that's, so, that's exact first thing we ran into actually well yeah. well because because the, the the point is like what we have a unit of account of value in the system which wikipedia doesn't right like like but but even then how is like more stake proof of something uh, and what is it proof of right is there more proof of like uh people fighting over what you know what can be written on the you know donald trump wiki or or something like that or is it just you, you know what i mean and that that was the first thing we ran into but at least now there is a uh, stake and for example you can also include uh page views as a you know like which front ends are getting uh, more, uh, you know, viewing. And, and so one of the things I, I forgot to talk about actually that makes Everpedia as a protocol really interesting is, for example, you can create any front end, uh, and pull a subset of all, all knowledge. And then like, for example, only show, uh, you know, you can make elephant Pedia, right? Only show elephants and, and like right. content about, uh, elephants, not everything, right? Not politics or, or yeah, science. Yeah, actually, let's talk about the metadata component of your data. So how much, uh, tagging and discussion around what these articles are, it happens to exist. A lot of that's hidden from the users in, uh, Wikipedia, but where, what does Everpedia stance? Like if I wanted to spend an afternoon and learn everything I could ever learn about, uh, I don't know, some Chinese, uh, herb, you know, pick your favorite one. And so I enter that search term in, obviously it's going to find that based on the searchability of the data. So I do, I tag it as the author, can the community curate and tag it? Is it discoverable? Even if it's not explicitly tagged, there's an implicit way through AI or another means to actually discover this on the knowledge graph. So how do you guys handle the metadata problem of knowledge discovery and curation? That, that's a huge issue with these systems. Yeah, so we do have very basic rudimentary tagging. Um, anyone can can add 
uh, a tag. Um, but again, one of the things with, with tagging and, and discovery is we actually uh, want to make the, the, the base protocol as simple and uh, unopinionated, kind of like the idea of Bitcoin, right? As, as possible and, and actually leave the, the tagging uh, as well as the displaying as well as the discovery algorithms uh, uh, to as many you know front ends and, and stuff like that as possible. So like on everpedia.org, which is the main uh, front end, there's a, there's a few uh, more. There's some some front ends in uh, China actually um, that that pull the, the content in, in their own way. But um, uh, we we just have the state of the articles as well as their you know associated tags that come inside the whole IPFS uh, blog file. Um, but what we would like to see and what we're kind of seeing and doing ourselves is uh, every front end or every group can uh, ta tag their uh, these articles partially internally to the protocol and then a lot of it externally and then like publish these links um, so that there's kind of a, a front end uh, tags that people can integrate for their products or, or something if they want per hash or, or state of an article, um, but also they come within protocol uh, discovery tags, but they're, they're very basic right now. So like, for example, it's like cryptocurrency or, or like uh, medicine. I don't, I don't think there's Chinese medicine or, or uh, right. all of these things yet, but yeah, we do think about uh, discovery and, and knowledge uh, a lot as well, but we want to keep it unopinionated, right? Like again, we, on the protocol level, we just want to have arbitrary, uh tagging by editors okay and so and so those tags the metadata is also stored or a hash of that is stored on blockchain yeah yeah per actually uh per state of of the article so like since what state was it tagged like you know with cryptocurrency and then was it removed was another tag added at this current state uh what are what's the what's all the metadata associated with it exactly okay all right. And so what about uh, localization? So obviously the world speaks English pretty well, but there are certainly many places, billions of people uh, that don't. And, you know, we live in a polygot society. So uh, what provisions are made for other languages? One of our frustrations was with the Cardano article. There was a German article and a Dutch article and a Japanese article. And those were all notable. But then apparently in English, we're not notable. So, you know, I'm Japan notable, but not English notable. So how, how is this resolved in Everpedia? Do you suffer similar problems or do you have a, a better way of resolving um, localization? Also, equivalent quality across these articles. Because in some cases, when you read the Japanese article, it's completely different from the English article, even though it's the identical subject. Right, right. And that's its whole can of worms. It's, uh, I think I actually, I think I became uh, Swedish notable first because Everpedia's HQ is, is in Stockholm. So I, I think I, I personally became uh, uh, Swedish Wikipedia notable first. But um, so there's two things. One is um, Everpedia is actually used in a bunch of places where it's difficult to access uh, English or uh, the local Wikipedia. Um, uh, or, or it's unreliable. I don't, I don't know, you know, to make any kind of, uh, you know, like political uh, opinion, whether it's like Turkey, China, or, or anything like that. I know we're used there. Um, and, and so uh, people can, can access it through um, front ends there that are in, internal, right? So like certain countries uh, stop access to things like Wikipedia or, or outside sites. Uh, in terms of language, that's a very difficult question. One is uh, we're used in a lot of places, right? There's actually uh, German Everpedia uh, itself is uh, uh, pretty um, old school. I think it was our first big uh, community. But um, right now, our huge biggest communities are Korean uh, Everpedia, Chinese. A lot of it is because of the, um, the prominent you know, position in, in crypto the project serves. Um, in terms of language, what we would like to see, and I'll be the first to say and honest that we haven't really made too much progress, is that we'd like to have one object, right, uh, that's that's about the particular topic and, and uh, kind of like all of the cross-language knowledge kind of synthesized into that, right? And so Wikipedia doesn't do that, right? Like you said, 
the the like Japanese article on Cardano or, or whatever else is totally different than than the English one, and they're all disjointed on Wikidata, which is this uh, schematic data structure, uh, you know, back end of, of Wikipedia. Um, those two articles are connected. This is the same thing, right? It'll link to the different languages, but um, it's not well done at all. And so I I think that it can be much better done. We haven't personally made too much, uh, you know, uh, progress there, but we have really vibrant communities everywhere. And then so I think with our more tech focused method, we'll we'll be able to make bigger impact there. But as as of now, I'll. I'll say I'm of the opinion one object, one topic, uh, one you know place where humanity puts its uh, sum total, and then you know you could it, it can break up into different colored versions. But um, but I'm of the one object, one topic model. Um, that's what we're striving for. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wish we had another hour, Sam, but unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. So if a person wants to join or become part of the Everpedia project, where should they go and what's the best way of getting started? Yeah, I mean, we're super active on, on Twitter, Telegram, if you want to join our communities. But if you want to start editing, it's just as easy as uh, everpedia.org. Um, and you can sign up with anything, like I said, Twitter, email, uh, Facebook, or if you have a uh, a crypto wallet. Um, it is currently built uh, only on EOS. Um, like I said, we are very, very open to uh, collaborating. Um, in fact, one of the things I was looking at the other day was uh, Ethereum L2s, uh, which would be super interesting, right? Um, but yeah, so I would love to talk and get to know a lot of the Cardano community. Um, and it'd be fantastic to uh, start the conversation together. So thank you so much for having me on and, and hopefully see uh, some of you guys on the Everpedia Telegram and on, on the site. Thank you so much, Sam. This was a lot of fun. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too.